The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard of this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means laced among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Once when trying to find a home that I was going to bless, I was driving around so frantically and I was already late for the house blessing and they were waiting there with food. And so I kept driving and driving and in my frustration I was driving faster and faster and I did not realize how fast I was driving and all of a sudden I look in the rear view mirror and there are these lights <laughs> and I can see the police car <clears throat> with the lights all flashing and so I stopped my car and the officer comes up to me and he notices that I had the uh, Roman collar on because I was going to do, you know, a house blessing, so I was on duty. And he says to me, You know, Father, you're going 20 miles over the speed limit. Why? I said, all apologetic, Well, I'm lost and I don't have the right directions and I'm already late. I'm so lost, officer. <laughs> to that, the wise, the wise policeman says, Dearest Father, <laughs> what makes you think 
that going faster will make you find your way. <laughs> and then he proceeded to write me a big fat ticket. <laughs> now, what makes any of us think that going faster will make us find our way? The wise policemen gave us some wise words. And today we are celebrating the wise men, as they are called traditionally, even though the Bible doesn't say they were men, it just says they were magi. But we call them the wise men from the East. Wise. Wisdom. We all need wisdom. Remember what Solomon prayed for? He prayed for wisdom. And when we have wisdom, we have God. Because God is described in the Bible as wisdom. Sophia is the word for wisdom. We all need wisdom in our lives. We need more God. Now today the Magi are lost in this particular gospel reading that we have just heard. For whatever reason, they cannot see the star. And what do they do? They ask for directions, which makes me kind of think that maybe they were actually women. Because men... <laughs> Men have a hard time asking for directions. That's one of the things the police officer said. Why didn't you stop and ask for directions? Now, maybe sometimes in our lives, and maybe it's the time in, in your life right now, where you cannot see the star right now in your life. What do the Magi do? The wise men, they stop and ask for directions. They say, where is the newborn king? Where is he? They're smart enough to know that they are lost. And they want to get where Jesus is. They want to get to where Jesus is because Jesus is peace. He's hope. They want to find Jesus. They want to see Jesus. So they stop and they ask for help. Now that tells us a lot about what we need to do in our own life. We need to ask for directions. And asking for directions is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of being very wise. We have a hard time as people to ask for help. Maybe you need to, in the new year, get yourself into a 12-step program for whatever issues that you are facing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's being wise. It's not being weak to go into an AA program or a narcotics program or an Overeaters Anonymous program or to ask your doctor for help with depression or anxiety or to get counseling or to get help if you have a gambling addiction or whatever it is. To ask for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of wisdom. Be wise, in other words. And we are here in this place where Jesus can be found, which means where peace reigns in our hearts. What should be our response? The same one that the wise man had as they 
head to Bethlehem. The Bible says that they can see the star again. And what happened when they saw the star? And look at that big star over our tree. What was their response? They were overjoyed, the Bible says, at seeing the star. It leads them to the place where Jesus is found. And when we have Jesus in our lives, it leads us to joy. When I have Jesus, I have joy in my life. For I have peace. I have hope. And they offer their gifts. They take in that presence. Isn't this what we come to church to do? To bask ourselves, to bathe ourselves in the presence of God, which tells me that it's all going to be fine, whatever issues I may be facing in my life whatever problems whether they be personal problems relationship problems problems with my children problems at work not being able to pay my bills fear and anxiety whatever it is whatever it is that is making me feel lost confused it may be that I'm dealing with the effects of losing a loved one, the effects of not being able to forgive, the effects of the mistakes that I've made, whatever it is that is making me feel lost in my life. I'm taking in that presence here. The presence that says, it will all work out. You will be fine. Jesus is in your life. Peace is in your life. You have hope. And that's what gives me joy. Like the wise men, I'm called to be overjoyed at finding Jesus in my life. And they worship the one they've been seeking. At times, they could see God's guiding light and at other times they didn't. They are like us on this journey of life. You notice they were on a journey to get to Jesus. Like us, you know, we're all on a journey. Life, the life that we are on is a journey. It's not a destination. It's a journey. And the journey can be bumpy. And you know that from your own life. And sometimes the wise men could see the star and at other times they couldn't see it. Just like us. You know, they, we feel lost at times and they, they were lost. But they wanted to be where Jesus was. And that's where we should always want to be where Jesus is. And they never gave up on the star, even when the star was hard to see. That's what we have to do. Not give up. You know, if you have cancer, or if you have any type of debilitating disease, or if you're facing any type of issue, medical issue, any type of issue, you've got Jesus. Seek the star. We never give up. We're Christians. We're people of hope. You won't give up. The Magi are perfect companions thus. I think for our own spiritual journey. Which is why at the beginning of the year, the church gives us this beautiful celebration. The Epiphany. The star has appeared. Follow the star. Because like the Magi, we should always want to follow the star and want to go where Jesus is. But like the Magi, sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to see 
God's light clearly, isn't it? Of course it is. We get confused. We lose our way. The night grows dark. And we find ourselves asking so often, why won't God make everything clear for us? We throw our hands up in the air. And when that happens, you know, when that darkness hits, because darkness is present in all of our lives from time to time, you know that it's not all just wonderful. It's not going to be all wonderful this year. There's going to be problems. It's called life. Rocks are in the, on the journey. Bumps are on the journey. Remember Magi. They were smart enough to recognize that they had gotten lost. And when that happened, they used their God-given brains to think things through. And they were humble and smart enough to ask for directions. Don't be like Father Adam, driving around fast and faster and with your foot, 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 you know, getting heavier on that gas pedal. Don't be like me, thinking that going faster and faster will make you find your way. And we often, so often do that in our life, don't we? You know, we think that if we're going to go faster, if I just keep going, you know, if I get myself busier, work more, 12 or 14 hours, maybe my busyness is going to mask the fact that I'm not dealing with the underlying issues. So you get lost in your work. Or you mask your problems by getting lost in the casino with the machines. Or you mask your problems with alcohol or with the computer. Don't do that. It gets you in trouble, doesn't it? All those things get you in trouble. Huh? You get a ticket. <laughs> and there are consequences. We have to be humble enough, like the Magi, to ask for help. Stop. In other words, what is it that I didn't do? I didn't stop. I kept going and going and faster and faster and that got me in trouble. But if I, if I stopped, and as the police officer said, well, Father, why didn't you just stop and ask for directions? You know, and, and what was I doing? I had my phone. You know, and I had the, the GPS thing on. And uh, I, I have to tell you something that may, may, uh, may astound some people here. Google does not have all the answers. <laughs> if you're on a country road somewhere, it doesn't have all the answers. And maybe the maps you have downloaded on your phone are not updated. <laughs> the only one who has all the answers is Jesus. Only God has all the answers. And He's the only one who we should be seeking guidance from in our life. And He leads us to the people who can guide us. Like medical professionals. Medicine is a gift from God. I keep saying that over and over again to people. If you're depressed or anxious or you have issues, seek help. You know, we have such wonderful, wonderful tools at our disposal with 12-step programs. And if you join any 12-step program, whatever it is, 
the first step is recognizing that you have a problem you know not keep going faster and pretending that that there is no issue you know huh? but recognize that you have a problem and then recognize that alone you will not get out of the problem and that you need the help of a higher power ah, and that is a secular program that says we need the help of a higher power and that's why we come to church because we know that we need the help of a higher power and that higher power for all of us here is Jesus the star of our lives our guiding star and he wants to help each and every one of us so we have to be humble enough humility and smart enough to ask for help how do I get close to Jesus which means what how do I get my peace back huh because I want peace that's my one wish and prayer for each and every one of you my dear brothers and sisters because I love you so very much my one prayer and wish for each and every one of you is this year not that you get rich or successful or whatever but that you have peace peace the gift of peace and when you have the gift of peace you've got it all you've got the Prince of Peace you've got Jesus how do I live in hope how do I get out of this gloom and this stuff that is paralyzing me in my life? You know, moments come when it seems like the star has disappeared and the light has grown dim in our life. For example, if you have a disease or a sickness in your life, where is the star, you ask then, right? How do I get through this? Or if you're struggling to be a good spouse or a good parent, you know, or when the world is a mess in so many ways all around us right now, all that's happening, you know, you just turn on the TV or, or the news or you, or you read the news. There's so much that is happening that can rob us of our peace. And we may say, what do I do? Lord, I want to be like Christ and live like Christ and forgive like Christ in my life. But, you know, on some days it's hard when people wrong me, when people do bad things to me, when I get hurt, when I have to put up with all these co-workers, and all these backstabbers and all these people who it's obvious are out to get me and you know I feel lost and so whenever the light has gone out of your sky remember the Magi when they got lost don't do what I did what did I do in the car? I panicked. I panicked. <gasps> and then I kept going faster and faster. Do not panic. Be wise. Don't panic. Don't give up. But don't panic. Don't give in to despair. Use your brain that God has given you and ask for help. And never lose sight of your goal, which is, 
I want to be where Jesus is. I want to be where Jesus is. I want Jesus. Because I want peace. And where is Jesus? He's here. He's all around you. He's with you always. He's in you. He's in the people around you. He's in the Word, in the Eucharist, in prayer. He's with you always. You know the story of Jesus' birth in the Bible is the one that we all, the world remembers it. It's only 180 verses long. It's not a long story at all. But the story of our life will only make sense if we allow Jesus' love to be a part of our life if we allow his love to be a part of our life and his star to guide us that is my one prayer for each and every one of us as we start this new year that we may always allow the star to guide us and seek Jesus as we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God.